So what comes out of a volcano? There are three main things. Obviously the lava itself, which we'll talk about a little bit more in detail in just a little bit. Pyroclastic debris, which are fragmented volcanic materials that can accumulate and thus get blasted out of the volcano during eruption. These fragmented volcanic materials um, usually originate from the volcano vent itself. And then we also have gases. Now remember I talked about what comprises a melt. You obviously have the liquid stuff. You have um, volatiles, which are the dissolved gases that get trapped within the magma chamber, the melt itself. And then you also have some solid pieces of rock. Now what about lava flows? Are they all the same? Let's take, for example, the picture that we, the image that we have here on the screen, where this is an example of an extremely explosive volcano, where maybe all of a sudden you just saw this stream of lava shooting up in the air, along with these other debris and ash and falling material. Now think back to another style of volcano, like the ones in Hawaii where if you've seen videos or picture of the lava flows there, where they're not necessarily explosive, where you get these nice extensive lava flows that maybe look pillowy and ropey, and these flows can move larger and longer distances. The reason why lava flows differently is purely dependent on its viscosity. Now, viscosity is its resistance to flow, which means that there are some lavas that are more viscous, which means that they are less likely to flow. And then there are also lavas that are um, really low in viscosity, which means that they are more likely to flow. Now, in order to understand why we have lavas with varying viscosities, we need to look at the lava on its molecular content or its molecular level. We know that we have four main kinds of magma. Think about to the four types of igneous rocks. And those are felsic, intermediate, mafic, and ultramafic. Where felsic igneous rocks or felsic magmas, that being the melt that makes up those igneous rocks in the first place, contains a higher amount of silica, which means more SiO2. Whereas conversely, mafic and ultramafic magmas or igneous rocks contain lower amounts of silica, which means less of these SiO2 molecules. Now when each one of these SiO2 molecules, which means that each silica atom will connect to two oxygen atoms to create a silica molecule. These molecules will attach together and bond together to form these silica chains like you see here on the top of the screen. Each one of these shapes, right, these formations of these molecules where they are bonding, we call each one of these the tetrahedron. When we have more silica that are bonding with one another, we'll contain more of these tetrahedron chains. Because you have two open oxygen atoms connecting to one silica atom, that oxygen is going to want to readily bond with another molecule, which means it will bond with another open silica molecule. The more of these silica molecules forming these silica tetrahedrons that we have, the more solid they, are, they will be. It is very hard to rip apart the silica tetrahedron. So felsic magmas or felsic lavas that contain a lot of these uh, silica molecules and these silica tetrahedrons, they're going to be more sticky because they're going to be less likely to separate from one another, which is why if we have felsic lavas, they're going to be more viscous. So they'll behave more like a sticky blob. Whereas if we have a mafic or ultramafic lava, or mafic or ultramafic magma, they will contain considerably less amounts of silica, which means that they are gonna be less viscous because they don't have these really solid and put together silica tetrahedron. Therefore, we have two types of lava flows. We have mafic 
or basaltic lava flows, and we have felsic or rhyolitic lava flows. Now I use the terms basaltic in interchange of mafic lava and rhyolitic for felsic lava is that basalt is uh, one of the main types of extrusive mafic igneous rocks. So if we have a mafic lava and you were to cool that mafic lava, it would form basalt. And the same thing with the felsic lava. A common extrusive type of felsic rock that we have is a rhyolite that comes from a felsic lava. So we have two main types of lava flows, basaltic and rhyolitic. Now basaltic or mafic lava means that it has lower viscosity, which means it is more likely to readily flow. Basalt, we know that melts at an extremely high temperature because it contains more of those mafic minerals like olivine and pyroxene that have extremely high melting temperatures, which means that it takes more temperature to melt them. So mafic lavas will be extremely hot. They will have obviously a lower silica content and they will also have a lower viscosity. These mafic lavas will tend to be thin and fluid-like and they can flow for very long distances. So on the bottom left hand corner of the screen here, we have an image. Now this is an example of a basaltic or a mafic lava flow and we call this a poihoihoi, which is a Hawaiian term for a rope-like lava flow. Now we can also form other types of basaltic lava flows and you'll see those later on in the slides here. The other type of lava flow that we have is a rhyolitic or a felsic lava flow, which these tend to be cooler lavas because felsic lavas containing felsic minerals like quartz and potassium feldspars have minerals that will begin to melt at cooler temperatures, so not as hot. So the lava will tend to be cooler than something like a mafic lava. Now they are very high in silica content, which means that they will be extremely viscous, so they will have a high viscosity. Felsic lavas tend to be thin and sticky lava flows, where for the most part they don't really flow at all. If you have a felsic lava that will then come and make its way out of a volcano, it'll be instead of this nice eruptive type where it flows nicely out of the volcanic vent, it's going to essentially blow its way out and be extremely explosive. So on the bottom right hand corner of the screen here, you can see an image of a rhyolite dome where this has formed due to felsic lava. So anytime this volcano had erupted, it would almost be so explosive that it would blow off sometimes the edges of those vents. And that's essentially where you get a lot of those fragmented debris. Now, because we have different types of lava, right? And we know that those different types of lava will flow differently. That means we can tend to make different types and shapes and sizes of volcanoes. And we'll learn about three main types, those being shield volcanoes, cinder cones, and stratovolcanoes. Now, shield volcanoes are the largest. So if you look on the top of this image here, this is an example of a very large shield volcano like you would find in Hawaii. Now, shield volcanoes, as you can see, they are very wide, but also low in relief and low in elevation, which means what? These are likely to have formed from a more mafic lava, so basaltic lava flow, because we know that they are lower in viscosity, which means those lavas can flow for longer distances than something like a felsic lava flow. And then we have our cinder cones, which tend to be short in relief, but also in length as well, or dimension. So cinder cones, they tend to form from more felsic and intermediate lavas, which means they tend to be a little bit more viscous and don't readily flow. And then that brings us to stratovolcanoes, which are intermediate in size. Now they are um, higher relief than something like a shield volcano, um, but they're also wider than something like a cinder cone.
which means the stratovolcanoes are more likely to form from an intermediate lava flow, which means that it is not as viscous as a felsic lava, but not as least viscous like a mafic lava. So here we can see that lava flows are ultimately determined by the type of magma in the first place. And thus, the types of lava flows, or the type of magma, ultimately speaking, will determine the shape and size of the volcano that we see on the surface of the Earth. 